lesson. Slightly longer lesson. I'm going to try and have us out here in 15 minutes. Okay, so first of all, okay, so we did, let me give you the background real quick. We did a land title survey in May. It was for the seller. Okay, the seller did not have a lender yet. <clears throat> he didn't need a lender because he's the seller. Okay, that is abnormal. We don't usually do that. We usually work for the buyer and the buyer has a lender. Okay, and the lender is the one that really cares about what's on the survey because they're the one at risk. Okay, but in this case in May, I worked for the seller and there was no lender. Okay, that is a really sophisticated seller that, that if you've got a seller that hires you to do a land title survey before they put a property on the market, those people know what they're doing. They're like, this may be only the second or third time in my 20 year career that that's happened. That is a sophisticated seller. They know what they're doing. Why did they have me do the land title survey? before they put the property on the market. Add value. Add value, and did they want to wait for a land title survey when they found a seller? Nope. So they basically had me do the land title survey ahead of time, and they and I agree to modify the certification to include whatever buyer and lender they wanted, okay? So that's a smart buyer. Okay, so that was in May. So now they got a buyer. The buyer has a lender. Okay, now because this is a, these are super sophisticated folks, and this is probably a, this property deal is in the tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. The seller has a lawyer, the buyer has a lawyer, and the buyer's lender has a lawyer. So I got three lawyers that we're dealing with, okay? Our contract in May was with the seller. Our contract now in January is with the buyer. We are working for the buyer's lawyer, okay? So, I sent in my land title survey. Let me just, so when we got under contract with, the, with this buyer, the contract was for a couple of changes to the, the, the updates to the land title survey. They sent us a zoning report, which we didn't have before. So we had to update the zoning report. We had to do a site walk, make sure they didn't change anything. That's basically it. That's all we agreed to do. Okay, that's important. I'm telling you that for a reason. Okay, so I sent everybody my Updated survey, okay. Our client forgot to send me the lender comments. <laughs> so the lender's lawyer sends comments. So when do you think I got the lender's comments? Yesterday at three o'clock. When do you think they want the survey back? Today. Today at three o'clock. So we're gonna do the best we can, okay? Six, take away that other stuff we didn't purchase. Okay, so yeah, Mike's already figuring out what's going on. So. I'm going to tell you what, what's going on. This is a, so sometimes this is a dirty, dirty trick that the lender plays on you. Sometimes the lender, it's not always a dirty trick. Sometimes the lender, the lender is just regurgitating boilerplate. They're not really trying to hose you over. And I don't know what, I don't know what we're dealing with this in this case. I'm going to give this gal the benefit of the doubt and assume she's not trying to screw me. And that she just gave me some boilerplate. Okay, and here's here's what you gotta look out for. It, it's almost always the same thing. They try and add stuff to the certification statement that I sign on the land title survey. So I'm gonna give you a rule that you are never allowed to break as long as you work for me. We do not ever, ever modify the certification statement on a land title survey. We use the certification statement in the spec, word for word, punctuation, of, thus, verbatim. Okay, so let's look at her comments real quick. Okay, what's the very first thing she has that she wants changed? Certification statement. The certification statement. No way, Jose, not doing it. Okay, now I'm going to come back and tell you what I don't like about her certification statement in a minute. Okay, and then she has this other bullet list. Okay, so here's the short lesson that I want to teach you guys. It's not the long lesson. Can I hand this to John G and expect him to do a good job? This email. No. So, what did I do for Mike and John? Punch list. Punch list. Here you go. Mike and John know exactly what to do now. They can check these boxes. Okay, so project managers, Danny and Matt. This is what you got to do on something like this, right? Give people a punch list. Okay? All right. So, Let's go over what I don't like about the certification statement. Okay, there's a couple key things in here that I don't like. Um, so you see, I'm okay with basically everything in here, mostly except 
Anytime you see item 21 in the certification statement, you need to panic. Okay, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Look at your table A, which I printed for you, and tell me what item 21 is. Nothing. Item 21 is blank. Yep. Can you ask me for item 21 after I've provided you with a scope and a fee? Nope. No, you cannot. If I'm going to do item 21, you better tell me before I give you a price and a schedule. Okay? So 21 is a grab bag. That's 21. 21, A, B, C, D, E, F, yeah. G, H, yeah. I, J, K. Yeah. yeah, 21 is a grab bag. So if you see item 21 in a certification statement, you need to come get me. Because they're trying to throw something in there that they didn't pay for most of the time. Okay? So let me tell you what I don't like about her item 21. There's some specific language in here that I want you guys to learn. You see 21A? <clears throat> All areas affected by any recorded restrictions. You see that? I don't like all and I don't like any. That is code for we want to sue you. Okay, what I will say is something like all areas observable during the survey and any restrictions or access limitations provided to the land surveyor by the client or the title company. Oh, can I ask a quick question? Yep. So since 21 is blank, Mm -hmm. They're literally filling in what they want? Yes. Well, now that's okay. They can't do when you're doing it. That's okay, but they can't do it at the end. When do they have to do it? At the beginning. Yeah, like these people literally yeah. called me yesterday at 3 o'clock and said, we want this tomorrow by 3 o'clock. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay, but ignore that for a minute. Well, I may do some of this for a fee. What I'm, gonna, what, I'm, what I'm teaching you right now is the language I don't like. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see all, any, forever, Never, any kind of, those kinds of words, absolute words, like those belong in marriage vows, not in the certification statement on the land title survey, okay? So I don't like 21A, I'm not gonna say all and any, okay? And then uh, 21B, um, uh, I'm probably okay with 21B. Is it in both directions? Uh, they want two ties, uh, and we gotta check that. If I didn't do that, we might, we might take out both. Um, good catch, Mike. Uh, so they want two ties. I might just we might take out both in both directions. I might just say as measured from property lines. Uh, Twenty one perimeter of uh, the perimeter dimensions of existing improvements. Okay, so there's two things I don't like about twenty one C. First of all, has anybody provided me with contemplated improvements? No, that's coming out. And she says uh, perimeter dimensions of existing improvements. Now, notice here's why I don't like that part of twenty one C. Notice twenty one H. Um, location of all buildings and improvements. Okay, so what we do on land title surveys is we dimension buildings. Do I dimension sidewalks, pools, shit? You know, like, no. So 21C is coming out. All of it. Okay? All I'm going to dimension is the buildings, and nobody gave me any proposed improvements, so 21C comes out. Uh, 21D, I'm okay with. 21E. Uh, I'm okay with because it's on the survey, uh, but it's covered in another, another table A item, so that's coming out. It's in like six, I can't remember what item it is. So I'm going to take it out because it's already in there. Um, 21F, uh, location and size of internal driveways and paved areas and the location and number of individual parking spaces, uh, that's coming out. Okay, The parking spaces are already included in a separate table A item. And did I calculate areas and dimensions of driveways and paved parking areas? Nope. Now I will do that but they're gonna pay for it, and it's not getting done today. Okay, 21G, are they getting that? Location of walkways? No, it's included in the topo. Like, I, if she really wants that, I, I, I wanna know why. Like, it's on the topo. What, what do you, why is it a separate table of table A item? Uh, 21H, what word do I not like in 21H? Yeah, not saying that. I'm gonna say location of buildings and improvements as built and observable during the survey. What if there was a parked car on top of a utility hall? Right? Like, yeah, no, observable during the survey, okay? So I don't, I'm not gonna say hall. I'm okay with 21i, uh, but it should be a separate table A item. It's already in whatever the building table A items are. That's coming out. I'm gonna tell her C table item A, whatever. Okay, uh, 21J, are they getting that? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they're not getting that. You know, what they're, you know what I'm going to tell them if they want 21J, all entrances to and exits from each building? 
that's a site visit, and they're going to have a maintenance guy walk my crew around with a with a <clears throat> rag tape, mm -hmm. and that's it's two days worth of work. I, I will do that. There's like fifteen buildings. Yeah, I will do that, and I will add it. But like, am I throwing that in as a freebie on the end? At the end? No, that's crazy. Okay, twenty one k. All water retention areas and drainage water receptacles. Are they getting that? Like, no, that's not a, that's not standard. Like. On that site, what what do I got to do to make sure that I got all the drains? Like, scorch that thing with a bazooka so I can see all the drains? Like, no, that, that's crazy. I I'll, I'm not even gonna do that. If they ask me, like, do you have a irrigation plan? Like some as builds? I like I can't walk that. That there's three foot of vegetation on forty percent of that site. Okay, so she's not getting that. Okay, so I just wanted to walk you guys through that. Okay, that is that is dirty, dude. That's some dirty. That's some dirty stuff right there. And she, it may not be intentional. This may just be boilerplate they throw on every certification statement. And guess what? There's surveyors that do what? Put that on there. Sign that without paying attention to it. Okay. All right. That's it. That's basically. I wanted to go through that with you guys. The rest of those things are okay. Oh, one other thing you got to do. So she listed a bunch of table A's here. Um, how do we know which table A's we're doing? Mike, this Maximus, you got to go to the contract. So let's go to my scope, and let's just. And I've got this on Mike's punch list, but let's just look at this real quick. Okay, so uh, Danny has a pin. He's going to circle all the ones that aren't in the scope. So number one is good. Number this is task three, by the way. Number one is good. Number two is good. What are you talking about? All these right. She's asking for these on task three. Look at your scope. Oh, right. Yep. Okay, so number one is good, number two is good, number three is good, number four is good. She asked for 6A and 6B, are they in the scope? No. Nope. So they don't get those unless they want to pay extra. So those are bad. Um, eight's good. Nine is good. Does she get 11? She's asking for 11. Does she get 11? No. No, she doesn't get 11. 13 is good. Does she get 14? Yes. No? Yes. Oh, she does get 14. I'm sorry. You're right, Danny. She gets 14. She's asking for 16 is good. 17 is good. Does she get 18? No. Nope. No. Does she get 19? No. Nope. No. Does she get anything on 21 without more money? No. Nope. No. So 11 is the one that uh, we usually don't do if you don't get all the reports. Which is what? Yeah, okay, so yeah, so I got to tell her. Now, most of the time, 85% of the time, when I push back on the lender and say, hey, the, uh, the client didn't pay for these table A items, you know what they say? Most of the time? They say, okay. Listen, they, they want $50,000 more work to, to get all the, measure all the interests and exits and find all the drains and do all the util underground utilities. And yeah, that's, that's 50K. Ugh, are they going to want to do that? Not only is it 50K, how long is it going to take me to get that done? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. So this happens on almost every land title survey when you get to the end. So that's why I wanted to teach you guys what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. Okay. So don't worry about that right now. Okay. Now I'm going to teach you the survey of dirty little trick. Are you ready? Because I have dirty little tricks too. Uh, when am I going to kick this back to the lender and tell her that we've got some issues with her request. About 2 o'clock today? About 2 o'clock today. I'm going to send it over with the revised survey. Why am I going to do that? Because it's Friday and they're not going to be here. Because it's Friday and that's going to buy me an extra day to get the revisions done. Dismissed. Thank you. Was that helpful?